Okay, hello everyone. Um, I'm Kang Mok. I'm a second year PhD student at UIUC. And we are a network research group from, from UIUC. Um, I'm looking for 2024 20, summer internship. Uh, my area is uh, performance optimization for distributed application and um, system for machine learning. Hi, I'm Aditya. Um, I'm a second year undergrad at UIUC and also a software engineer at Aviatrix. And yeah, I also work on this stuff. Yes. Okay, so let's talk about our project late. Oh wait, Slate, um, Service Layer Traffic Engineering. So Microsoft's applications are very complex. It means it is really challenging to optimize performance of this application. One service can call uh, dependent multiple services, and one application can consist of uh, multiple tiers. So we raised a question, uh, what could be a good request routing for this kind of complex uh, Microsoft application? Uh, we need to consider multiple factors. Um, here's the setup. There's service A and B, and we have four different replicas for B. The first thing we need to consider is network RTT. Um, different, uh, like geo distributed region can incur different network RTT. Um, even within the same region, locality matters. And also there could be some network congestion. We need to also consider cost. Uh, for example, bandwidth costs. You're supposed to pay for um, egress costs when you want to transfer data from your local region to the remote region. And there could be different request type. Um, different requests might lead to different um, resource usage or different call graph even. And this is not a single um, simple um, single hop client and server relationship, but it's a multiple layers. So we need to uh, consider multi-hop optimization. So before uh, go into going into our own um, system, we want to share some interesting um, survey results we conducted on um, Istio community about cross-cluster routing. Um, this is the first one. So we ask, uh, what kind of load balancing are you used for multi-cluster service? Multi-cluster service is simply individual service deployed in multiple clusters. And the answer was locality weighted, locality failover, uh, which we're gonna talk about later in the presentation. Um, more common load balancing policies like round robin, list response, list requests, and so on. And the second question was, um, is it useful, will it be useful if we provide um, some way to optimize cross-class routing for you? And most of people say yes. And the reason were to improve request latency, um, improve cloud bandwidth cost, um, load balance, and compute cost, and so on. So you can see there's a huge gap between uh, what they're doing right now and what they want. Um, the all, uh, survey, complete survey is available in our repo. So we want to fill this gap. So this is our problem statement. The request routing in Microsoft's application is a much more subtle problem than today's load balancing and traffic management. So what we want to do here is globally optimize request routing based on admin's intent. So, some people might say, oh, I thought this problem was solved by you know, fancy autoscalers, load balancers, and traffic management. Um, autoscaler, um, yeah, it provisions resource. It can partially solve some problem. However, it doesn't control network traffic, which is request routing, and also it is really slow. It takes like seconds to minutes because of sequence of process that you need to, take, uh, you need to uh, process. But request routing is a millisecond uh, time scale uh, decision. And load balancers, um, uh, it makes wrong assumption, which is replicas are identical. It does not consider cause, it does not consider a multi-op, and so on. If how about traffic management? Service mesh, like Istio, provide their own um, traffic management scheme, like locality failover. For example, like one service fail in one cluster, a um, request will be routed to another cluster. However, this is simple heuristic, and also this is not optimal. And what about um, advanced traffic management? Like Google or Meta-like company, they provide their own um, solution for traffic management. It do consider a uh, network RTT, and, in, and also it has some global knowledge to optimize the request. However, um, oftentimes you can find this is suboptimal. We're not gonna talk about details in this presentation, but um, still, it does not consider network cost. It does not consider different request type and no multi-hop consideration. So none of them is solving uh, the, the problem, uh, the factors that we uh, presented. So um, our project, um, Slay, service layer, uh, service layer Traffic Engineering, is inspired by network traffic engineering, which refers to the optimization of routing 
to improve throughput, low, balance, uh, low balancing, or um, latency of different classes of traffic. So we are here lifting up this concept from network layer, uh, L3, to um, service layer to solve request routing problem. So this is our design goal. Um, the first is we want to react to the changes in load and latency fast, and also we want to make it uh, easy to express for different um, operator intents like um, cost, availability, or, or latency. And also we want to make it instant, uh, we want to achieve instant pluggability into existing deployment. The project is still, um, yeah, uh, implemented actively. Um, so yeah, this is our architecture slate. Let's say there's application, three services, and we have our own data plane, which is slate uh, WASM, and we have cluster controller, and this is one, cl uh, one con uh, cluster. And we have multiple of them, uh, in this case two. And we have a global controller. And global controller will receive admins intents like dollar per millisecond, interesting metric we're gonna talk about later in the presentation. Um, data plane will send start and, in, uh, start and end time information, also load information like RPS to global controller through cluster controller. And um, we're gonna run some optimization inside global controller and output um, optimized routing role and it will be pushed down to the um, data plane through cluster controller. So uh, what's happening inside global controller? Global controller receive, uh, needs uh, topology information and also cost information and latency information. Latency here, we model it as a function of a load. Um, here we are, we are using right now linear regression. Um, X axis is load and Y axis is compute time for a particular service. So we do it for every service, for every cluster. And you can use a relatively um, simpler function like step function or more, uh, even more complex one like machine learning model. And we express it into well, one, um, problem formulation and putting into the Groby framework. And we're gonna use linear programming technique and output this optimized routing rule. This is an example of um, our routing rule. Um, for example, a request flow from A to B. In West cluster, we want to uh, route 90% uh, of the load locally to the West clusters and 10% to the remote cluster, which is East cluster. So now I'm gonna talk about the use cases of, of our system that it performs the best in. Um, the first one is where it can instantly uh, react to fluctuations in load. Um, second one is when you can optimize um, egress costs in like these dynamic uh, service topologies which have multiple call paths. And then we have um, handling different request types uh, differently to optimize uh, traffic. Okay, so the first case, uh, let's imagine a setup where you have two clusters um, perfectly replicated um, in different regions, so um, they're far from each other. Let's say traffic is stable between them, and all of a sudden there's a burst in US West. Um, the first thing that's gonna happen is um, product page is gonna get overloaded. This is the default like Istio book info application. Um, when product page gets overloaded, it's gonna experience um, some latency. And um, ideally what you wanna do is, um, because you're gonna experience a lot of latency locally, because you're, uh, there's a big spike in load, you wanna send some of that um, load preemptively off to US East so you don't incur um, that tail latency. So there's a trade-off here between like, are you gonna incur the network RTT um, for, and, and like the remote compute time uh, versus the local compute time? Um, and this trade-off uh, is not a trivial one to think about, um, but our system um, optimizes this based on the load conditions and um, the load to latency model, um, which is uh, constantly modeling for every service in real time. Um, so the real question here is like, given different load conditions, how should we distribute requests across replicas in different regions? Istio says everything locally until the local thing fails, uh, but we say it's a little more um, nuanced than that. So we ran some simulations um, where we ran against uh, two other baselines. You have local load balancing where you only route requests within the cluster, uh, it doesn't matter um, if it fails within the local cluster or not, you just route it locally always. There's multi-cluster load balancing where you kind of split traffic between clusters 50-50. This is kind of naive, but that's the other baseline. And then there's our system where basically we have this uh, notion of utilization in the current cluster. If we have um, some capacity, then we send it in the local cluster. If we've reached max utilization, we spill over to the remote cluster. Um, 
And then so in the, in the left graph, as you can see, um, this is a CDF. So uh, at the last 1% of requests, our tail latency is like a lot lower than um, local load balancing and multi-cluster load balancing. So the dollar per millisecond thing Gang was talking about, um, what does that actually mean? Um, it's just a way to express what the value of latency is in your case. So let's say latency is super important. Then the value of this metric will be higher. And let's just take this topology here. Um, if, as you can see, the right cluster has 1,000 requests and the left cluster has 10 requests, if one is a lot more overload than the other and you don't care about cost, um, you're going to want to route as many requests as you can to the remote cluster. So in this case, um, it's roughly 50-50, where latency is super important. However, as you start going down, as this, met, as this uh, value starts going down, you'll start routing less and less requests away until you really care about cost and you don't care at all about latency and you're routing everything locally uh, just like you would by default. So this is a nice way to kind of um, express as a spectrum uh, what your, um, how much you value um, latency in your case. Um, the second use case is to uh, minimize egress costs. So the question here is like, if we have multiple ways to make a cut between um, regions, uh, between services, how do we do it? So the same example, uh, we have two geo-distributed services. Um, let's say one goes down, ratings all of a sudden dies. Um, what's going to happen is requests are going to flow from ingress to product page to reviews, and then it's like, oh, there's no ratings locally, so I need to go to the next available one, which is in US East. Now, this is probably fine, except for the fact that you can make the cut in other places. You don't have to make it at reviews. It just happens because you do some greedy load balancing. So the issue is when you have different call sizes across these cuts. Let's say the call size from reviews to ratings is 100 kilobytes. It's the biggest of all of them. Uh, you have to route from uh, reviews in US West to ratings in US East because you have no other option, and you chose to stay local the entire time. If somehow there was some future site and you knew that you would have to route away um, eventually, you should pick the cut that takes the least data so you can minimize your egress costs because cloud providers usually charge for egress out, data out. Um, yeah, egress cost is in dollars per gigabyte, so it just it, de it depends on the amount of data you're sending. So the correct thing to do here is to route from product page in US West to reviews in US East, uh, because that has the least amount of data being sent. So we ran this in an actual multi-cluster environment uh, with Istio, and um, multi-cluster load balancing and locality load balancing, because they do something like pretty simple, they didn't do as well. Uh, but then if you have future site like we do, um, you save a lot of money on bandwidth cost and you know, on latency because you're sending less uh, data over um, large portions of the earth. The third and final use case is when you have different request classes, um, how should you treat those in a multi-cluster setting? So let's say you have two request types and they have the exact same call graph. So request type one and two, but they have different characteristics. Let's say request type one is very compute heavy, meaning that it triggers like a lot of CPU cycles but it doesn't send a lot of um, data over the network, so it's pretty network light. Whereas you have the exact opposite on request type two, where you have a very compute light request type that triggers like not that much compute, but it's a very data heavy job. So what do you do here when you have total fail, uh, when you have like overload in US, US West? Um, the correct thing to do is to start routing the compute heavy away stuff first, so your local cluster gets relieved. And you wanna take advantage of the local routing um, in your, in your cluster uh, to take, uh, you want the network heavy request to take advantage of the local network in US West. So classifying this is hard and that's something we aim to do as well. Um, so as far as status and future plan, uh, there are currently some challenges with this, um, with um, you know, solving these problems. Latency is hard to model. There's all sorts of condi conditions it's subject to, like uh, resource interference and whatnot. And also, a call graph prediction at the per request level is something that has not been done before, uh, to our knowledge. It's pretty hard because, like, um, there are all sorts of things in the request that could trigger different call graphs, like, and there's things within the system like caching, so that's kind of hard. There's also making the system more compatible. Um, so right now, it only supports two clusters. We want to expand as many clusters as anybody wants. And also, um, our, one of our primary goals is to, is to make it uh, pluggable. So it uses, like, WebAssembly plugins and just stuff you can... Uh, do one kubectl, kubectl apply and it's installed in your cluster. Uh, we want that to happen. It's not fully there, but that's a, that's a goal for us. And we have a demo. 
All right. Um, so we're going to show the demo for use case one, uh, latency optimization. It will take like three to four minutes. Okay. All right. So um, here, uh, this is our global um, con controller. And we want to send the load to the West cluster only for, for now. And um, Slate requires some profiling phase. It takes some time. Um, in this case, um, I, we loaded a uh, latency model already to, because of the time limitation. Um, it takes some time to profile. And now see, we, we're not using Slate for information. We're not using Slate right now. And you will see um, the latency here when everything is routed locally. So here you see 300 milliseconds for average latency and three seconds for tail latency. This is like 100% local routing without slate. And we want to um, send some load to the east clusters and the uh, slate is profiling for east clusters. It would, would be done pretty soon. Okay, now the slate is on and you see um, your number here, uh, cluster zero to cluster zero, 100%, and closer zero to closer one, zero percent, and vice versa. So it means 100% local routing for now because there's no uh, load to any, any clusters. And we are leveraging uh, virtual service in Istio. Um, you can see, uh, we're gonna show it again in later. Um, and now, because uh, we just turned on Slate, we want to send the same amount of load to the West clusters. And now you see here, number is changing like in real time every a few seconds. Here you see um, from zero cluster to cluster zero, which is local routing, 77%, and rest of them 20% to the remote cluster, which is uh, east cluster. And you can see the number is changing like dynamically, like every four to five seconds. Oh, sorry. And here you will see um, lower latency in a few seconds. We just basically are doing like offloading a, like optimal number of requests to the remote clusters. Right, take some time. Oh, before we see the latency here, um, let me show you how we express our routing rule in virtual service. You see here, 65% um, from West cluster to West cluster. This is a connection between Ingress Gateway and, and product page. And from West cluster to East cluster is 35%, uh, which is uh, remaining percentage. So this is how we configure the rug and roll. And, oh, I'm sorry. And the latency, you can compare, now we achieve 52 milliseconds for average latency, which was 100 millise 300 milliseconds and 176 milliseconds for tail latency, which is like much lower than the, the local routing. And when there's no load, um, the slate will fall back to 100% local routing automatically. You can see here the configuration expressed in virtual service, and this is how it works. All right, thank you, that's it. Um, if you have any feedback, um, it would be appreciated. Hey guys, great talk. I wanna make sure I understand the control flow. So you've mm -hmm. got traffic is flowing through Envoy proxies via Istio, yep. and that's generating telemetry metadata mm -hmm. that then Slate is observing to see those latency changes and then Slate is applying changes within the Istio API exactly. in order to respond to that t change in telemetry latency. Yeah. So it's, it's like, so yes, um, it doesn't actually scrape Envoy metrics specifically because uh, we found that like to go through Prometheus, it's a little too slow um, to re like do instant reactions. So we actually send our own metrics. We uh, we create a Wasm plugin, uh, which we plug into every like proxy that wants to participate, and then. Um, we create our own metrics which are sent um, over our own API. And then um, you push them rather than pull the, them? Yeah, exactly, we push them. Okay, so thinking of how to tighten that control loop, is there something that can be done within the Istio API space or within the Envoy API space that would allow you to sort of take your intent that you've already expressed 
and have it be much more responsive within, say, a single Envoy proxy, be able to make those decisions rather than require that loop out of Envoy and into a control plane and back? Um, it, it's it's kind of hard to say because um, you need the global, like it's nothing the Istio or Envoy API can do. You need the like global view of all the loads and all the clusters to make the decision. Like we tried looking to do something local, but whenever you do something local, you kind of lose out on the global view. Um, and for this, like we decided to stick with a global view because you kind of need that for optimal routing. Um, but the, the APIs are great. Uh, it was really easy to like plug into um, like the Wasm plugin API in Istio and then just like Wasm stuff in general. It was really easy, so APIs are good. Cool, thank you. Yep. Great talk, I really enjoyed it, thank you. Um, do you have any plans to also consider extending your traffic engineering approach to DNS so that the request lands on the right ingress in the first place? Um, we're not, um, for, for now, we're not currently planning to expand it to DNS um, layer. But yeah, there's definitely something that w we can try. But we want to solve this problem in the service layer first, in an Envoy and Istio context. And if we're done, yeah, we want to ex expand it to, to other Sounds great. layer too. How do you run your global control plane in a highly available fashion? The global controller. <laughs> it's not so highly available as a demo. Oh. But yeah, um, right. ideally, like, it would be run um, geo-distributed somehow. Uh, yeah. Like multiple um, global controller, like logically centralized, but like physically we can um, maintain multiple central controller. And also we use, the, the reason that we use cluster controller uh, to uh, minimize the network bandwidth between data plane and um, global controller so that we can aggregate the information. So we, we want to kind of mitigate those um, risks. Sure, in your case you have two regions, west and east. There might be use cases where you have a lot more regions where that mm -hmm. becomes much more important to have the control plane globalized essentially, but in a fashion that it cannot really fail, you know, but still is fast enough for every ingress to access it. Yeah. So thank yeah. you very much. Thank you.